We're back. He's still yeah. ugly. Dennis didn't help. Hey. I'm still sick. So what we're going to do is, well, mainly he's going to do. Oh, no, that's a lie. <laughs> Let's replace that AC compressor right there. This one right here, brand new one. Because the old one is leaking right here along the seal. I don't have my little blue light thing to show you. But I'm not replacing extra parts for no reason or I'm not throwing parts at a car that doesn't have a problem. So clean under my hood. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely need to clean under here. So first, looks like we're gonna have to remove the power steering. First the belt, power steering, then we'll get to the compressor and we will bring you along with our what sick, tired, and face hurting selves. Yeah. Alright, so we had to remove the power steering fluid reservoir, which makes it a heck of a lot easier, but we still got, you know, hoses and hoses and hoses in the way. But we are that much closer to getting this done. So next we got to remove this clip these two lines back here and then we can bolt the compressor unbolt the compressor and take it out uh, we fun. yeah we do have new valves to go ahead and replace for the high and low side and uh that way we can make sure make sure those are still good too it's so like an actual tool to do it. yeah and an actual tool to do it instead of having to make a tool by cutting a socket up so all right. Uh, cut to 30 min later. Cheap about finding the right size bolt I need. But anyway, we ended up moving, removing the battery and the box so that we can access the other two bolts that are down there at the bottom. And you can see on one and two. So that'll make that job a lot easier now that we know in the beginning what to do next. If I never have to work on another Ford again, I'll, it'll be too soon. So, yeah. So far, so good. Cleaned up in there, nothing really special. Got the back bolt off, but I guess we needed to get most of the stuff undone because this line and this line, this line right here, these two attach to this bolt right there. So there's no way of getting it without taking the battery out. It is what it is. All right. So now we have the last two bolts out. So hopefully it'll just come out, which maybe not. So. Got all the bolts undone and less. Say two bolts in the back. No, not there. Um. Oh, okay. That's it's not a mechanical bond. It's got a dowel or a pin. Yep, there it is. See it? It's sitting on those little dowels right there to line it up so that you don't be an idiot when you're putting a new one in and uh, misalign it for the serpentine system so that you don't misalign it and screw it up and break stuff you know you know Ford did circle the problem so that they could uh, make it easy for you to work on their products which they don't well, so obviously it didn't idiot proof it if people like me can break it <sighs> well this is broken before you got it let's put it down there all right there she is the only thing we gotta change over is this heat shield. Which is total bullshit, but we're gonna do it anyway. Still 13. compressor looks like normal everyday basic 
All right, so here's the old compressor and new compressor. This one about to put in. Didn't know if it had oil in it or the compressor oil. Didn't know if it had that in it, so you know we kind of had many panic attack because we had no way to go to the store to get it. But yeah, had to check that once we figured out it had oil in it already. You know, get ready to throw it in and yeah hopefully everything goes smoothly he went inside so i figured i'd do this back to work all right so don't forget when you're installing the new one for one we already checked it with oil for oil and for two make sure when you put the new one on let's get that piece of the spot there we go you line up the dowels on the into the guides on the brackets it should be a simple thing to say and do but I'd be surprised that you know it might get missed so he's talking about by idiots like me yeah, yeah, yeah. If you keep calling yourself an idiot one day you're gonna believe it so one day how do you do um, let's see there we go all right that's okay that's threaded properly <laughs> helpful tip of the day if you can if you can tighten it by hand first you can gar almost guarantee not to cross thread the bolts so if you're unsure, put it in by hand first and then go ahead and uh, run it in with the, run the bolts in. Yeah, I know we didn't show the whole process, but we got the battery back in, reservoir back in, new compressor in with oil. And we don't, the accumulator, I don't have the right tool to undo this piece right here. So we are just gonna go ahead and leave it for now. Uh, that wasn't the problem. The problem was the compressor was leaking. So now we got ourselves some Supertech 134A. And this has, I believe, this is where, up oh, 12 ounces right there. So we need where was it? Right there. Right under here, we need one pound, 14 ounces. So, what is it, 16 ounces make a pound? Chicken. All right, so we got six, 16 ounces makes a pound, which means we need one, and two, that'll be 24. Let's say 16 plus 14 would be, I gotta do math, watch the gears grind. Huh? I said to make, make sure uh, the sunroof is up. So we need 30 ounces, no, six, yeah, six plus four is 10, zero, one, that's 30 ounces. So, 12, 24, two full cans there, and then we need six ounces itself out of this. How do we do that? We weigh the last one. So, we know we're gonna be putting two full cans in. So what we gotta do now first, pull a vacuum on the system. I know it's not the best to use brake clean on it, but it'll evaporate and we'll give it a minute before we do anything, so. But, yeah. So now, we got that end off, this end off. All right, we'll go ahead and set up our high side and low side. Let's not get these. All right. Go. 
They put this with one hand. Huh? They put this with one hand trying to record it at the same time. Alright. Yeah, you take over. I can't do it with one hand. this in now okay. well so now we're gonna go ahead and get it started and then open up both sides and what we are looking for is that needle to start pulling a vacuum on there let's give it a minute and see what happens all right so now that we finally got a vacuum being pulled because this here was loose so it wasn't getting a vacuum now we're going to let it sit for a few minutes and then once we see if we can get it any closer to 30 inches of mercury if we can't get it any closer then obviously this is as, as low as it'll go but then we'll let it sit <laughs> then we're then we'll let it sit for a few minutes we'll shut the pump off close the valve we'll close the valves off here shut the pump off and then wait for about 45 minutes to an hour to see if that changes and loses vacuum. If it doesn't, then we can proceed. If not, if it does, then we got to find out where the leak is coming from. All right, so we're going to verify that our numbers is correct. That should be 30 ounces. So because we have 12, can, 12 ounce cans, so all right. Two full ones go in, and then we have to measure the last one for the last um, six ounces to go in, and then we are set. So, what we are ready to do is put the engine back together. Put that in its place. All right, we got that together. This is hooked up. First, we got to purge this line. So you get the hold. All right, yep. Since I have no idea what I'm doing, I'm cameraman. Yep, we get to purge this line of air in there. Try nothing. There we go. Alright, so we had to do that just to make sure that there's no air in this line that gets introduced to the system that we have a vacuum on now. So now we got to go start the truck, turn the AC on all the way, cool, and low fan. Turn the car, yeah, all the way on. Turn your AC on. All right, so now we're gonna add the first can. with the first can. And we can see in the sight glass 
we still got refrigerant going through. So, and we hear the compressor kicking on and off. Down there, see it's kicked on and off, so it's good pressure in the system. So once this can gets empty, we'll add the other one in there and that should stay on more constantly. Adding in there, and the compressor isn't kicking on and off so much. And it's about empty already. is 15 ounces so we only need six ounces out of this so that means we're going to let fill this one up go ahead and attach it and again it's still 15 ounces we're going to plug, puncture that through and then we're going to slowly open the low side until we get the screen chest. Nope. I hate it with this one. It's got to be just right. There we go. Alright. Now we got the can. Now it's reading 17 ounces, probably because of the pressure of the hose. So we're going to adjust and we'll just go down to 11 ounces. All right, so we got it all done. We got it down measured to what this should be weight wise, which would have been 11 ounces after, but right now it's about six from 12. So we're right there, one ounce. It might be a little more because the other can stay down there for extra long. So now we have these shut off. We can close this valve here. Take that off, put its cover back on. And then we can do the same thing over here. Close it. Pop it off and put the cover back on. Now we've already checked. He does have very ice cold AC in there now. So, job's complete. That's it, we got cold AC, we got a brand new compressor, and we have it filled up with 30 ounces of R134A Freon refrigerant complete. So now he can not drive the car on the road and have, still have AC as he's driving around the property. Or okay, just... I wanna point out I have not gotten my permit yet, so this entire thing is my idea to get good at driving he's just trying to kill my ego <laughs> you do that in your own. So, anyway now thanks for watching like comment hey subscribe and hey always remember why where's your helmet <laughs> putting on my helmet now ready <laughs>